let's jump into this. Uh, All right. So, uh, uh oh, let me make a quick adjustment. But Modifius, they they sent us uh, yet another PDF of another mm -hmm. fantastic game. And there we go. Now we can see it. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> I know. Ah, there we go. Now, <laughs> now everything's working right. Um, so the interesting thing about this game, and I, I, I'll toss it out right. It's a. Uh, it's so sorry. This game is called <laughs> Five Parsecs Out. This is a sci-fi miniature parsecs game. from home. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's it's a sci-fi miniatures game that you play solo. Um, right. This is for war gamers out there, people who who do war games. Like you know, you're you're, you're gonna just instantly understand this book it's uh and and then just for people who like collecting mini miniatures or terrain this is a great way to to dive in and use those items in right. interesting ways <laughs> um yeah yeah so one of my favorite games and and i will always say this is one of my favorite games of all time is a game called mordheim mordheim was a game from uh wizards or not wizards coast the other one that starts with w uh uh, Warhammer, uh, Citadel. There we go. And <laughs> exactly, and and that game uh, was a squad-based, semi-role-playing, competitive game. Um, and one of the things that I really liked about it was each of your minis had like their own XP counter. They had their own right. powers and injuries and um, and things like that. And this is and they've brought a lot of that into this game. So there's these post battle activities, and 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 you you uh, you resolve uh, all the action that happens. So if your character died, well, or or you you get to roll on a chart to see if they're dead dead, or if they just got an injury, uh, you can do things like take your mm -hmm. uh, your money from the the adventure and buy new equipment. Um, yeah, it's in in and they even go through a cycle of how to build out these solo adventures right. and just how to play it all. it's it's fantastic i'm i'm super jazzed about this whole thing yeah i really like this because like the the theme that they start with is hey you probably have some miniatures which is true for me um although most of mine are fantasy <laughs> but uh but it's just okay you you know take those those six miniatures make a six person squad they run through character creation for each of them where your characters can be um spacefaring humans they can also be aliens or potentially robots of some kind um as you were headed out here, uh, your stranger characters can get even wilder. There's a whole bunch of different backgrounds. And they all just kind of modify your basic stats at the start. They give you slightly different loadouts. And, and then you just get out into the world. Um, I think it's, it's quick. It's very cool uh, the way they have it set up. And I like that it's tables, honestly. I mean, like you, I'm, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of Warhammer Quest, so I love just the, like, I want this. I'm going to roll on this table and see what happens. And uh, it fits very well with, with the solo style of play that I assume that we're looking at here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing that they do really well, and this is this is definitely something that's done really well in war games specifically, and I think a lot of RPGs and, and tabletop mm -hmm. RPGs could could learn a little from this. And it's the way that they set up the diagrams to understand how actions in combat work, and what constitutes as cover, and and, and how to look at cover and educate cover with the rules yeah. set and all that, like little things like that, like. You know, um, we were we were playing Pathfinder two yesterday, and one of the sure. the, the issues that I have have with Pi Pathfinder two is the density of everything. Like everything <laughs> is so hard to find, and there's so many rules, and a lot of it's great, but oh, you know that that is that is one of the things, right? And, yeah. and and this book does a really good job of laying out the rules so that you understand them. So that if you have questions like, um, all right, so is this an action that has to happen or is this an action I can choose to happen or is this, mm -hmm. uh, can I react or, or how does this all work? Um, and right. they have really good diagrams and uh, it, it, it makes this game, makes this book more readable and more enjoyable for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. I will say I'm, I'm a war gamer probably more than I am a RPG guy. I, uh, it's pretty close, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this game does a, a really good job of laying everything out um it does yeah it's it's a beautiful game it's well done i'm i'm super excited about this yeah 
And I, I like that, uh, you know, I if I were jumping into this, I would be like, well, how am I going to create the other team? What's going on? Who am I fighting? What You know, what's what's going on here? Um, this does a good job of setting up like what the winning conditions are for you. It talks about battles. It allows you to determine what deployment condition you are under just with with simple die rolls. So um, it is possible, you know, if you are doing a, a quest style mission on this table, um, it's possible that your game is like your deployment is delayed. So two of your random crew members won't start on the table at the end of each round. They might mm -hmm. drop in, hopefully. Right. Yeah. Uh, versus something like the cutoff guard where your characters are all slow. Like you, you don't get to be quick this round. Uh, you are surprised. And I love those mm -hmm. kind of things because I, I don't want every one of these battles to feel the same. And if it is a solo play, I really need those tables to give me that kind of variety. I'm not ready to come up with all that stuff myself. You know, just decide. I feel like this battle is going to be harder. Let's. Um, so mm -hmm. it, it's all in here, and it's really, really easy for me to read. Um, and I, with miniature games like this, don't often know what's going on. So this is pretty fantastic. It's well written. Yeah. Um, they and they do uh, in and on the screen right now is the conventions of the game. I mm -hmm. I love I love books that have this uh section so that you understand how to roll the dice what the dice yeah. mean um i i love so what they have specifically instead of using scatter dice like you might in a warhammer game you roll a d10 and wherever the, the edge of it is pointing that's the way it scatters right so uh, right. you would use scatter whenever you like throw a grenade right you, you have to see how off your your, your throw is and so you uh -huh. roll your scatter and it, it helps direct it and i'm I, I love that so much. It's, it's just it's very such a, smart. Like, right? It's and it's just such a smart section as well. Um it, it, oh. it, it really brings it in. Also, the inspirations. Uh there is I think two pages of inspirations. So mm -hmm. things to watch, things to read, things to dig into if you're interested yeah. in the setting and see how you can, you know, expand upon it and yeah. uh, you know, bring your own flavor to it. Uh, it, it, just it, it's just to entertain uh, you entertain yourself right so this is a one player uh -huh. game i've been i've been reading these rules and i'm yeah. very sure it would be a very easy hack to make this a two player game um it wouldn't take much at all and i think it would be a really fun campaign to run with folks mm -hmm. where you get like four or five folks and you know you have like these these objective goals that you have to do each session and yeah. it's just like oh uh, you know you, it, it's almost like a ranking thing like oh well this week it's gonna be justin rich and uh becky and and, and they're gonna get together and they're gonna play play in this setting and their goals are this <laughs> and then you uh -huh. recap at the end and you assign experience and you build up your characters and i i don't know i'm that, i'm in love with this style of game mm -hmm. and uh i i kind of love this game i mean you just described warhammer quest to me right there so i'm totally in i love the i don't know what i'm gonna <laughs> fight but i'm ready to fight it let's do this <laughs> roll some dice see what yeah. happens you know it's fun it's just fun exactly. it's quick you know consequences whatever it's you know <laughs> it's a battle game your characters mm -hmm. are gonna fall apart it's just the way it is um they are yeah, yeah i love great. this mm -hmm. yeah and one of the things i do want to point out also is i love the art so this is the the uh, one of the things that really ties a good book together is really good art yeah uh art that creates a feeling for the uh, the entire setting for the game uh, and, and and just for everything kind of around it, the art in this game is feels very futuristic slash cyberpunky. Uh, you know where they're using heavy brush strokes, where it's kind of hard to to uh, to to make out faces because faces it's it's just secondary, right? But it's yeah. just it's such a a good like visual treat to go through this book. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is the see. kind of book that has it's pictures a, of fancy space weapons everywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's a me. Bondo says uh, he ne they never tried a single player dice game like this. Yeah, neither yeah. have I. Um, and I've I've started building out a squad in it, and it was so far has been a really easy and enjoyable experience. Uh, I have enough knowledge about war games to go through this and look through it and see and understand like how the mechanics are going to work on the table. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Rich. Have you ever played anything, anything kind of like a solo, the style of game? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, solo is harder. I played Gloomhaven solo quite a bit. Um, 
Mm -hmm. uh, just because I have to get it onto the table at all. It's, I'm just going to have to do it myself. Um, and, uh, and so that one, I am playing two characters trying to go through these pre-written scenarios and complete objectives. So uh, I see that that's, that's definitely a little bit less random because, you know, we've got models are set in this specific story and things like that. So I actually like the, the randomizers for those things. I love that this is going to give me that experience to just, I don't know, do, do kind of whatever the dice land on. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it'll be easy and sometimes it'll be super hard and we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. This really calls to me as a, as a very, you know, a positive looking experience. It's just laid out. All my questions are going to be answered. I feel like I'm going to know everything I need to know to play this game. It's a good book. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. And I have, I haven't played any single player dice games like this, but I have played uh, both Apocrypha and the Pathfinder adventure card game. I've played yeah. both of those solo and, um and so it is it is enjoyable to play solo games mm -hmm. um and i'll try to wrap the, wrap we'll wrap this up within the next five minutes because i know you have a guest waiting for you in the sidelines um yeah. but um when 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 i played plato's games solo um i can cheat <laughs> right right <laughs> which i mean and... which i mean you, I, I i wouldn't normally do but like occasionally, like you know, if I'm in the last round and I realize I played a card wrong last turn, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna start over. If it's gonna no, kill no me. way. And <laughs> and I think right. and I think that for the casual experience of playing a game by yourself, I think that's perfect. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, especially if the game is difficult, right? I mean, if it is a game where you're testing your resources, uh, Gloomhaven is one where you get these ability cards as you level up, right? And what you're supposed to do is get rid of one of your old abilities and replace it with a new one. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that. And I played it for quite some time. <laughs> and I was just getting all these abilities. <laughs> and it was, it was fun. It was tons of fun to have them all. Um, like, always have the right thing for the right situation. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, and then I found out you weren't supposed to do that. And I didn't decide to change how I played the game because I was having fun and I'm not beholden to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. and, and that's, and that's one of the great things about this style of game is, is it's that you can play it by yourself. And if you know what, you don't like the way it's, it's flowing, change it. Um, yeah. but, but I will say in this, in this game, there is kind of cool perks to having one of your, one of your, your 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 soldiers and they're not soldiers one of your squad um uh fall right if because that doesn't necessarily mean they're dead it just means they're out of combat right. um, sometimes they can come back and be more awesome than they were before right yeah uh, um, you know like specifically like uh, and i forget the specifics but i think there's one where you get an injury and it gives you an increase to another stat because of the injury or you mm -hmm. get bonus xp that you can use to kind of build up your stuff uh, right yeah it's, it's like you can it's come really, back with it's cyber really attack. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's, absolutely it's so good so, so yeah, uh i guess it's kind of wrap up this review out. yeah yeah uh this is uh <laughs> five parsecs from modifius um and it's a fantastic game totally worth picking up uh they have the pdf for sale on their site and you could probably order it through your friendly local gaming store I, I imagine they have a hardback version as well that you can get through through those folks yeah. and all you need is this and uh, a few d6 and a couple d10s and you're good to go right 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 gosh i'm gonna have to try that out i've got some warforged i mean that's that's close uh <laughs> yeah yeah um i, wow. I can i can send you some huh. terrain <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll just have cat toys or, everywhere. That'll be it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, like a lot of times when we were playing Warhammer, uh, as as I was kind of growing up and everything, we would use things like shoe boxes and uh -huh. like cereal boxes and things like that to create terrain for us to work around. Right. So I yeah oh yeah, it's just your imagination. Exactly. I, I will say that you know this is it's very cool. I love the the DIY aspect of that. I grew up playing D and D with Legos um oh, for yeah. miniatures and terrain and stuff you know it was tons of fun they didn't look like anything <laughs> uh it was fantastic <laughs> so <laughs> I, I love this sort of thing i want to play it with fantasy minis and just be like yeah this um this tiefling with a, with a battle axe that's totally a space hulk with <laughs> yeah a huge rail with gun a, with or something. A machine you know, gun. whatever yeah, yeah exactly right. <laughs> right yeah doesn't matter All it'll right. be fun <laughs>